Welcome to our viewers and listeners here at home and around the world. I'm Cedric Peterson, and you're now Inside Government. In this special edition, my guest is the director of the St. Martin, the Integrity Chamber St. Martin, uh, Ms. Sharna Pompier. Ms. Pompier, welcome to the program. It's great to have you in this edition of the Inside Government. Thank you, and thank you for having me. The conversation we want to have with you is to get some insight in regard to the new establishment, the Integrity Chamber St. Martin. For those that might not know the story behind this organization, can you please give us some insight in regard to the history of the chamber and then discuss a little bit about the task and role of the Integrity Chamber? Sure. So the idea for the Integrity Chamber dates back to 2013, 2014, during a time when there were a lot of discussions about integrity issues on St. Martin. And at that time, there were reports in the media, there were rumors circulating about corruption, and St. Martin had a very negative image at the time when it came to integrity. And the government decided to, the St. Martin government, I should say, decided to get some inquiries done as to the state of integrity on St. Martin. And there were three reports written, and one report in particular, the report Doing the Right Things Right by the Committee in Tejo Open Bar Basture. They um, recommended the establishment of an integrity chamber that would be an independent organization that can look into integrity issues on St. Martin and also improve, give advice to improve integrity on St. Martin. Okay, so let's now look at the role and the tasks of the integrity chamber. What exactly is it that the organization focuses on? So the role of the integrity chamber, like I said, is to improve integrity on St. Martin. And we have three main tasks. Our first task is to give advices and proposals on procedures to improve integrity. The second task is to investigate suspected misconducts of integrity within government and within government entities. And the third task is to create awareness on the importance of integrity in the community. Why is integrity important? That's a good question. Integrity is important because integrity builds trust. Integrity um, builds trust between government and the citizens. It builds trust between government and its international partners with potential investors. Without that trust, government can't function as effectively as it would want to. And if that's not the case, then the whole island, the whole country would suffer as a result from that. So integrity is very important. How does one look at it um, personally? Because one can easily look at this interview and say, oh, that has nothing to do with me as a citizen. No, that's a government thing. That's an organizational thing when it comes to integrity. They should deal with that. How should a citizen view themselves in relation to the topic of integrity? That's a good question. You know, integrity is is everybody's role. Um, the government had a slogan in the past that um, I still, still, I think they still use it today, that mm -hmm. integrity, it starts with me. That's so right. everybody has a role when it comes to integrity. It's not just about the civil servants or government employees or politicians or ministers. It's everybody's task. And we need to be able to call each other out as well when we're seeing that we're not behaving in a way that we should be behaving. Ms. Pompier, when it comes to suspected misconducts, that's something that the Integrity Chamber says that it looks into as well. Can you define that for us? What are suspected misconducts? So, yes. So, suspected misconducts is um, suspected misconducts are any inappropriate or unacceptable behavior within government or a, go a government entity. So, you can think, for example, of a, mis uh, a conflict of interest. And a conflict of interest could be, for example, a manager that hires a company that he has personal ties to to do work for government and thereby getting a uh, financial benefit for him or a family member. That can That's an example of a conflict of interest. And it can be a lot of other things. Um, other examples of um, suspected misconducts include um, abuse of power, um, fraud, theft, the misuse of company resources, corruption in general. So there are lots of different things that can constitute an, um, suspected misconduct. Can the integrity chamber prosecute a person who is suspected of misconduct? No, that is solely the task of the prosecutor's office. In fact, the integrity chamber doesn't do any criminal investigations and it doesn't do any personal investigations. So when we are investigating suspected misconduct, 
we are focused on the misconduct and how it could have happened and more importantly how to prevent it from happening in the future that is our that is our task to be able to then give an advice to improve that situation and like i said prevent it from happening okay let's get into the, the point of reporting when it comes to the integrity chamber independent body with an um Responsibility to answer to who? Go within government, within parliament? How, how does that work when it comes to the protocol um, and the authority um, that you guys have as, an, as a chamber? That's a good question. The integrity chamber is independent, like I said, and that's very important because it allows us to be impartial. So we do not report to um, the government, we don't report to any of the ministers, we don't report to parliament. Um, me as the director of the secretariat, I only report to the three members of the integrity chamber. When it comes to the makeup of the the chamber itself, help us identify who are the key stakeholders involved, the players in regard to the integrity chamber. Can you identify them for us? Yes. So the integrity chamber has three members. Those members are our president, Ms. Rian Vogels, uh, Mr. Hans Lutter, and also Mr. Raphael Bosman. And the members are supported by a secretariat. The secretariat currently has seven employees, including myself, and we are responsible for the day-to-day -day operation of the Integrity Chamber. And we also have a supervisory council that looks into specific tasks, or overlooks, I should say, specific tasks of the Integrity Chamber. Okay, go more in depth in regard to that, in regard to the role of the supervisory council. Can you elaborate for us on what their role and responsibilities are? Sure. The supervisory council has a very important role uh, when it comes to looking at the... I need to start that over. I'm so sorry. Okay, let's take it on the question. And we go in. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, let's take it on a question and we go in three, two, one. Um, let's get into, for example, the role of the supervisory council. Can you elaborate on their roles and responsibility? Sure. Um, before I elaborate on the re responsibility of the supervisory council, I would have to talk a little bit more about some of the special authorities that the integrity chamber has when it comes to our investigations. So, the integrity chamber when it investigates a suspected misconduct the first thing that we would do is request information from the the government or the government entity that we're looking into and if for some reason we can't get information we have special authorities that we can use so we can do an investigation on site we can confiscate information if necessary, and we can also bring in people for questioning. And for us to be able to use those far-reaching powers of the, the integrity chamber, we need to get permission from the supervisory council. So the supervisory council would then look into whether or not it's necessary for us to use those uh, special authorities that we have. Another role of the supervisory council is to make sure that we're using our our task or we're performing our task in an effective manner and if there are any complaints against the way that the integrity chamber are using their authorities then a complaint can be filed at the supervisory council so the supervisory council in effect makes sure that the balance remains there within the integrity chamber interesting stuff you just join us. We're speaking to Director of the Integrity Chamber, St. Martin, Michonne Pompier. Stay with us as we get into our second segment and in inside government. We're going to talk about how you can file a complaint of any kind with the Integrity Chamber. Details after the break. Stay with us. You're listening to and viewing Inside Government. Littering disrupts our progress as a nation causing irreversible social, environmental, and financial damage. Our tiny nation must fight the harmful practice of disposing waste items anywhere and everywhere. The Ministry of Romi encourages environmental pride by our residents and respectful use of the environment by visitors. This helps to keep our island clean. Littering causes harmful effects to our environment, such as trapping and poisoning of endangered animals, 
contaminated water that affects and kills marine life, potential fire hazards, destruction of vegetation in natural areas, transmission of germs which could potentially lead to disease outbreaks. For example, disposing of used face masks in the environment can aid in the spread of the COVID-19 virus. We can avoid permanent damage through very simple changes. Cleaning up after yourself in public spaces. Encourage others to do the same. If there are no waste bins in sight, take the garbage with you. Clean communities have a better chance of attracting businesses, residents, and tourists. Let us foster the change we want to see and lead by example. The Ministry of Romi encourages environmental pride. It's an island thing. Dispose in a bin. Welcome everyone. You're viewing and listening to Inside Government. Welcome to our second segment. If you just tuned in, my guest in this edition is the director of the Integrity Chamber, St. Martin, Ms. Shana Pompier. Shana, we left off talking about the role of the Supervisory Council and we kind of teased about the ability to file a notification with the Integrity Chamber. Um, how is this possible? How can one get that done? Filing a notification of suspected misconduct is easy. You can go to our website, that's www.integritychamber.sx, and there's a form on the website that you can fill in. If you're not comfortable filling in the form online, you can also download the form and fill it in manually. You can then post it to us, or you can come and deliver it to us personally at our office. If you need help filling in the form, you can also get a power of attorney, give somebody a power of attorney, and they can help you to fill in the form, or we can assist uh, where possible and filling in the form of uh, suspected notification, so notification of suspected misconduct. Sorry. Okay. Now one can, you can easily realize that someone can get a little nervous with doing or filing such a notification. Um, can one do that anonymously? No, you cannot file a notification anonymous, anonymously to the integrity chamber. We need to know the identity of the person that is filing the notification. And that for us is important for us to be able to verify the information. And if we have any questions that we can speak to the notifier. However, we treat information with strict confidentiality. So all information that comes to the integrity chamber also stays with the integrity chamber and we won't share the identity of the notifier to the government or government entity without the permission of the notifier. Ms. Pompier, I can't help but to realize there's certain similarities between the integrity chamber and the ombudsman and one probably could confuse the two. Um, is there a difference between the chamber and the ombudsman of St. Martin? That's a very good question and a question that I think that is on a lot of people's minds. What are the differences between the Integrity Chamber and the Ombudsman? I'll start with the Ombudsman. The Ombudsman defends the Constitution and protects the rights of the citizens. So if you as a citizen feel like you're being treated unfairly by government, or if you filed a request to government and you're not getting an answer, then you can send a complaint to the Ombudsman and the Ombudsman can look into that and advise the government accordingly. That's not what the Integrity Chamber does. The Integrity Chamber focuses on misconducts. So there has to be some inappropriate behavior or unacceptable behavior taking place in order for the Integrity Chamber to investigate what's happening. And anybody can do that, uh, file that notification like I mentioned before. So it can be a citizen, but it also can be an employee of the government owned company or a civil servant who sees that something is not going um, correctly. They can file a notification of that misconduct to the integrity chamber and then we can look into it. Go ahead. Another difference with um, the integrity chamber and the ombudsman is that the integrity chamber also looks into misconducts by government companies. So that's GB, Telem, um, the airport, the harbor, for instance. And we can also, based on the results of our um, investigation, give a binding advice to government or the government entity that they have to follow. Realize one of the roles and uh, responsibilities of the uh, the integrity chamber, um, Ms. Pompier, is the advice and proposal. So the chamber um, 
advises and proposes. What is the difference between those two? And when does the chamber administer their advices and proposals? So the difference between an advice and a proposal, um, the name says it uh, already actually. So in an advice, we would advise the government or a government entity on what we think they should do and how they should do it. And a proposal would just be more of uh, a, a procedure that we say, hey, this is, we propose that this procedure be implemented, for example. And how do we do that? So that can be done at the request of government. So the prime minister can request an advice or proposal. The responsible minister can request an advice or proposal. And parliament can also request an advice or proposal. And on top of that, we can do that on our own accord. So if we feel the need uh, to give an advice or to present government with a proposal, then we can do that as well. When it comes to more information that one can, um, if they want to find or get more information for, about the Integrity Chamber, how can one do so uh, to get up to speed in regard to the functioning of this particular entity? The best place to go for information on Integrity Chamber is to our website. And we have lots of information on there. You can find out some of what we've been busy with. We, for instance, came up with two advices last year, an advice on the SSRP and advice on the gift policy for ministers. And you can find that on our website. You can also find information about filing a notification and other information about suspected misconducts and whatever it is you might want to know about the Integrity Chamber. Ms. Pompier, as we're closing out um, in our interview here, just where can one get more information about the Integrity Chamber if one's interested in finding out more about the organization? So the best place to get more information on the Integrity Chamber is on our website. Like I mentioned before, that's www.integritychamber.sx. And on our website, you can find information about what we're doing. For instance, we came up with two advices in 2020, one on the SSRP and one on the ministerial gift policy. And those can be downloaded from our website. You can also find more information on the suspected misconducts and how to file a notification and anything else that you might be interested in. Great. Ms. Pompier, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us to provide you now with some final words that you might want to share with our viewers and listeners as we close out this edition of the program. Sure. I'd just like to uh, encourage people, if they want to know more about the Integrity Chamber, like I said, to visit our website. You can also come and visit us um, in person if that makes you feel more comfortable. Um, and I'd like everybody to know that we are here to serve the people of St. Martin. We are a local organization. We're not here to do the bidding of the Dutch government or, or the St. Martin government. We're really here to serve the people and to help improve integrity on St. Martin. That is our only agenda. And we have a small team, but it's a passionate team who are really dedicated to St. Martin and love St. Martin and really want the best for St. Martin. And, you know, we're here, like I said, to try and improve St. Martin government and government entities where we can. Director of Integrity Chamber St. Martin, Ms. Shona Pompier, thank you so much for being a part of this edition of the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. And to our radio listeners, television viewers, and online viewers, thank you for tuning in and being a part of this edition of Inside Government. If you've missed it, be sure to get catch video on demand at the official Facebook page of the Government of St. Martin at facebook.com forward slash SXMGOV. If you haven't subscribed yet to the official YouTube channel of the Government of St. Martin, be sure to do that. YouTube.com forward slash Government of St. Martin. Hit that bell and get notifi notified of any updated programs issued by the Department of Communication. And for audio on demand, be sure to tune in to the St. Martin Gov radio station 107.9 FM for rebroadcast. On behalf of my colleagues at the Integrity Chamber of St. Martin, and of course all of us here at the Department of Communication, I'm Cedric Peterson. Thanks so much for tuning in.